Hey, welcome back. So, so far we have a, uh, a model where if we click checkout, we see this. And um, uh, if I click cancel, it comes out. But let's improve this model system a little bit to resemble the bootstrap version. So if I click on the side here, for example, I don't get, uh, this doesn't exit, okay? So that's not cool. Let's see what we can do about that. And also, if I click on checkout, um, it should have a close. Uh, maybe we can add a close button. Let's see here. There's a close button over there, which we can also add. And the title is on the uh, far left here. So let's do something similar. All right. So let's start with... Um, the closing part so the closing when you click on the black part is very simple we just copy this hide model thingy and then we put it on the um, uh, wait a minute wait a minute we'll put it on this so let's see what effect actually it's not as simple as i thought because uh, we'll end up because you see things uh bubble up that's what they do with them um, i'll explain a little bit on that so click here and if i click anywhere here it disappears right but not so fast if i click in here as well uh it's going to disappear as well so i can't even type anything because it's bubbling up so bubbling means it runs um if i put event here um it's going to i put an event here this event will receive any clicks from within the content itself as well so let's try and stop it from bubbling if that will work i don't know uh not sure yet so what i can do is we we stop the event from propagating to the top so let's say i click something inside the div it shouldn't go to the higher up there so i'm just going to say e dot now e means nothing here so um let's see but we will define it very soon stop propagation so let's put e over there in there okay um now e is the event itself so hide amount so let's go we should have just used a search here to find it and not waste time so here i'll put event because it's required and here i'll put event as well let's see if it works at all yeah doesn't seem to be working at all yeah uh -huh. okay so it seems anything i click in here will affect um will affect the result here so let's try and figure out a way to limit the propagation to outside this uh, box here so what we can do is we can um i don't know i've never actually tried to to figure this problem out per se so what i'll do is instead i will hmm, let's try something okay let's try something together so what i'll do is i'm going to give this an id of uh let me give this id id is equal to now you don't need to use an id you can use a class so maybe let's use a class that way we can have many of these as we wish so say js um js model let's just call it a model like this that way this will have some significance okay so what we're going to check is if a we click something we're going to keep going to the parent until we get to the body right so we'll check the parent if at any moment the parent of that thing is a JS model, then we will not um, 
we will not allow the close now unfortunately if we do that uh, then the button here as well will not work hmm this is very uh, tricky business okay so let's think here a little bit what's going on um, back here again now what I wanted to check for um, because what I want to do is prevent this event from firing once I click within this box, right? Now, the only problem is if this box stops that response, it means even this button, if we click it, the close button, the cancel button, will not be able to close the model because it's within this div. So the area that we want is just the item that we click and so on. So instead of adding a class here, I think let's change things a little bit. What I want to do is instead, let's say this is a button, right? Let's give it another attribute. So maybe we can give it a raw attribute like this. Now this attribute name is just random. I just use this because I've seen it on bootstrap um, models or something or buttons or something. Let's see here. Uh, what do they have? Model, fade, button. Uh, there's this data BS dismiss model. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? What else? What else? Uh, where's the bigger box here? Model, fade, static background. Uh, yeah, this also has stuff here. So anyway, uh, there was a part I had seen raw is equal to something. I don't remember where but my point is that uh, this attribute can be anything right so it can be data slash bs like it is with this but um let's put uh, raw is equal to close button here and let's do exactly the same thing here okay so you're going to ask uh, why this is helpful now, this is helpful because even if I click inside here, because this on click listener will respond if I click uh, anywhere within this thing, it will still respond regardless where I click because of this, right? But I can ask it what exactly, which of these items was actually clicked. It will tell me by using the current target okay the same way we did with um, I think we've used this before in one of these uh, for clicking images when we click here as long as we the click event is on the whole thing but only when we click on an image does it respond so we've done this before so let's do exactly the same thing but now we're going to check for an attribute if this contains an attribute that that says close button only then do we respond so we'll check for the current target, the item that was actually clicked among these items. So let's go back to hide. Um, now we can remove the event. Oh, no, we do need the event because that's how we find out what exactly was clicked. So here, instead of uh, stop propagation, let's do this. Let's say um, if E dot current target which is whatever item was clicked the actual item not the whole uh so even if it responds to the whole thing it will show me exactly what was clicked so that very item that was clicked dot get attribute okay and what attribute do you want to get we want to get one called row yeah so we want to check if that attribute is going to be equal to close dash button like so so if that's true, then we are allowed to close this model. So I'm just going to do this and boom, boom. Okay, great. So let's see if this actually works and click checkout, click on this, it goes, click, click in there, it still goes. That, that, that doesn't work very well. No, it doesn't e dot current target to get attribute row is equal to close button let's do that 
Okay, so what I want to do here is just alert me to this. I want to see what's going on. So I can either use a console.log or I can use an alert. So I just want to know what is inside that attribute. So click close button. Okay, fair enough. Click in here. Why do I get close button? Now that isn't, um, that doesn't seem logical at all. So what I'll do here, I'll just uh, wait a minute. Do, do dot current target and I'll do console.log. All right. And let's do a return here so that we don't actually close anything. So refresh and click. All right, click inspect and let's go in the console. Clear the console and let me click here. So I get the model. Oh, yeah, this is my bad. This is my bad. I shouldn't get from the current target because the current target is the actual, is, is always the same. So let's change it to target. I think that they need to work because target is, is what was clicked yeah, sorry, my bad. So target is what was clicked, but current target is the one that contains the event listener. So this is why it wasn't working. So it should work this time. I don't know how I missed that. So click on checkout and click there. Okay. Here it should work. Here it should work. But here, no. There, no. Anywhere else, no. Here it works. There it works anywhere else it doesn't okay so that fixes it and so we can do the same with a button here let's add a button very quickly and give it the same treatment so in order for this to close let me go up to the model section and right here instead of putting the center div uh, tag here let's put a um, actually let's just leave the h5 oh wait wait I don't want the button to have an edge, but actually, why not? Let's do this, leave the edge five. Let me put a button here as well and put a large X. Now I can also put a font awesome icon, but let's put an X instead. And let's put a class and say button and button danger yeah something like this and let's set it to float to the end okay so hopefully this is visible what i'm doing here so refresh click and there we are we have a close button as well check out close let me remove the padding put padding zero and maybe put the h4 like that instead so click and click there we go oh okay that padding isn't so good so let's put uh, maybe padding one click and click still i think the padding i really need to deal with is the padding on the x-axis to be two that's the on the sides of the button okay so that looks uh, that looks cool. So anyway, you can uh, deal with these things as you wish. So exactly what we did here was say row close button get everything here, and put it right on the button as well and paste like so. So for as long as it has a row of close button, it will work. So click, 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 click nothing nothing click so it's working very well the only thing we need now is an animation and animations are easy to create so let's create one real quickly so what you do is you say at and then you say keyframes in your uh, css and then you give it a name so this one is up here and uh, we'll do this keyframes appear. 
So here what we need to do is tell it what to do at 0% of the time. So you can just put whatever styles you want and then we'll put one at 100%. Now you're not limited to just these two. You can put at any percent you want. At 90%, you put different styles at 50%, different. So it's going to animate uh, according to what you've done. These are keyframes you're adding. At 0%, I want it like this. At 100%, I want it to look like this. So the first thing I want on 0% is I want the opacity to be at zero so that it's completely transparent. And then I want the, uh, see, I want it to start from an offset and then move to the normal uh, place. Now, the reason I'm doing this is, see, I can have it move down like this. Let me show you uh, what I'm talking about. Click here. So uh, I want the animation from the top to bottom. So it slides in. But what I don't want is having it move uh, from here because I can do a translate and then it can a transform and translate and then it can move lower. The only problem with that is I'm going to base my uh, viewport on where it moves with that offset. But there are browsers that don't support transformations. And in that case, this thing will be slightly higher than it should be. So to make sure that it's always at the same position, whether the transforms work or not, what I'll do is instead at 0%, I'll have it move to the top here. And then at 100%, it moves back to where it's supposed to be. That way, even if the transformations don't work, it will still be where it's supposed to be. So anyway, I hope that makes any sense at all. So I'll say uh, I got it from personal experience. So trust me on that one. So I'll say transform and then use the translate. So I want to translate it in the Y axis by maybe 100 pixels. Maybe that's too much, but we'll see. And then I'll copy exactly these at 100%, increase the opacity to one and then transform to zero. So no transformation. So we start by transforming it. Now, since this is, we want it to start from up and not down, it has to be a negative value as we go up. So then I'll copy this up here and go to the row itself here. In the style, I'll add animation. So here on the style, I'll say animation. And animation takes a few params, we'll use just a few. The first one is the name of the animation and then how long it should animate. So 0 0.3, so I'll just say 0 0.3 seconds. And then I want to use an easy ease at the end so that it eases into its position. So I'll close this and click. And as you can see, it worked. Boom, right? Boom. So pretty good. Maybe it's too fast. You can reduce the speed by saying 0.5. So there's a zero here just by saying 0.5. It's supposed to be 0 0.5, but uh, this text is better. So I'll just say point five seconds which is half a second and there we go okay and then let's close that now you can put an animation even when closing by setting a timeout instead right so that uh, when we click the close we can activate the animation and then but that's too complicated we don't really need it because once we want to close we just want that thing gone so i don't think i'll go through that trouble Bootstrap has this where you close and it disappears slowly and goes back up, but it's unnecessary completely. It will just waste time. So click cancel. Okay. Now the problem is we're going to have several models. It, this is the system is okay if we have just one model like this, but if we have another model, it means now we have to redo. Uh, everything we've done here precisely, especially the JavaScript. It means now I have to, because this, see, this is very specific to a specific model. It says show amount paid model, hide amount paid model. What I would want instead is to have a general function that closes any model that's available and opens any model that's available. So uh, let's try and do that as well. Alrighty then.